at SMU. Second meeting between Memphis and Wichita State this season. The Tigers won the first 88-78. January the 19th, they control the tip. KB Burnett, Barack Ramanan, and Courtney Green are officiating crew. Memphis starting five, the Tigers without Keontae Kennedy for the remainder of the regular season. Jaden Hardaway takes his spot along with Davis, the Red Hot Elijah McCann, Chandler Lawson, and DeAndre Williams, who controls here, likely first team all conference player with Davis. First shot is a three for Kendrick Davis, a deep one at that, and it is a welcome return to the Memphis lineup. Well, you see his range, and Craig Porter got caught ball watching in the corner when Williams was making his move. You can't leave him. Well, Craig Porter can do that at the other end, a three to tie it. Starting five for the Shockers, a very good one. Melvion Flanagan, the walk on, gets another start. Jake Juan Walton, James Rojas, SEC transfers, and Kenny Cotto has been on a great run. And this is cleared by Rojas, Richard Sr. from Alabama. Uh, Wichita State playing better as of late, going inside out with their offense. Walton misses a three. There's Elijah McCadden for Memphis. Tigers winners of four straight before that Houston loss on Sunday, 72-64. Williams to find a Chandler Lawson back in the starting lineup the last couple of games with an early two. Now Memphis is playing a very unselfish offensive system as of late. Just making the extra pass, good spacing on the court, and we said, played very well without Davis at times. Lanigan's in and out for three. Point tries to start for a Wichita State team that's typically not very good from three. Neither of these teams shoot a ton of threes. They get a lot of their points in the paint. And Davis is so good at penetrating there. He does here. Beautiful pass fake, but couldn't finish. And the rebound to Porter Jr. Well, Isaac Brown told us earlier today, we, we don't want to shoot threes. We'll shoot them on opportunity. We're not a great shooting three-point shooting team. We're capable, but we want to go inside first. But so far, they've been bombing away from downtown 345th in the country less than 30 percent here's walton first two-pointer of the game is good for the red hot jake Juan walton which is state's leading scorer 14 and a half per game well so hard to defend especially when he takes that opportunity the mid-range game at its best rojas smothers mccadden it's a memphis turnover they had 18 of those in the loss to Houston Sunday. It's been a bugaboo of late. Rojas. A whole lot of contact there between Rojas and Lawson. Then Hardaway hit the deck. Memphis running with it with Davis. Stepping through, and he missed it. And though he missed that one, but good news for Memphis. He looks razor sharp and quick. Everybody looks razor sharp and quick right now. This is an electric pace. Flanagan, the last miss. Both teams do want to fly up and down the court, and Wichita State really emphasizing getting up and down, but you got to do a better job defending the three point line. Chandler Lawson, his second three pointer of the year. Inside to Poto, and Lawson fell asleep defensively after the main. Well, Craig Porter has been elite as of late with dishing the basketball, finding the open man, and that time Poto. Carved out space right at the rim. Sophomore from Sweden. There's Lawson bumped and found. Finally a whistle after some hectic action. James Rojas found. Benny Hardaway frustrated because, as we mentioned, Keontae Kennedy's not here. He is out for the rest of the regular season. Broken right hand after punching a wall out of frustration after Memphis's loss to Houston Sunday. They're hoping they'll have him back for the postseason, but Keontae Kennedy, the third leading scorer, done for the rest of the regular season. Well, that's a tough one to swallow for Penny Hardaway. He felt bad for Keontae, and he felt bad for his basketball team as well, letting the team down. Malcolm Dandridge off the bench with a miss. Alex Lomax in the game as well, and here's Rojas. Poto. Rojas grabs it over the back of Lomax. And James Rojas, the transfer from Alabama, with an early bucket in the paint for Wichita State. Four of the five Shockers have scored. Well, Walton, Rojas, and Poto, as of late, have played exceptional basketball for Wichita State. That's why they've been playing well. 
Inside, there's good position by Dandridge. Second game back from an ankle injury and looking very strong. Well, DeAndre Williams, though, a pinpoint delivery down in the low box. Such a good passer. He's really such a good everything, DeAndre Williams. I was very impressed today with Memphis in their shoot around. Organized, on point. Kenny Hardaway doing an excellent job of teaching and talking about the game plan for tonight. Stay away from Houston for a little bit longer. Well, you don't want to do that, though, because that means you're playing an extra game and you don't want to do that and Memphis is Memphis is not worried about any of that right now they, they're a good basketball team you can see them there on point with their game plan and Wichita as of late has been playing special as well so this game's off to a real good start on both ends John Pierre shot knocked out of bounds if the season ended today and it does not Disclaimer, but this is what the tournament would look like. Tulane having a great, great year for Ron Hunter. They'd be the two seed. Cincinnati Temple, a big win for Cincinnati in overtime last night. It's a league with only two NCAA tournament teams right now. As Rojas finishes high off the window. Tulane, Cincinnati Temple, maybe Wichita State. Some teams will try to play spoiler in Fort Worth in a couple of weeks and grab the automatic bid. Well, if you took Houston out of the equation, I, I would say you've got three or four teams other than Houston that could win it, but to beat them is going to be a tall task in Fort Worth. Number one in the conference and the nation. Foul against Malcolm Dandridge here. After the miss, as we go back to the basket by Rojas. Well, James Rojas is a physical type player, and this is what he does. He's got great footwork, balance, and the ability to finish in traffic. Scored in double figures, 10 of his last 11, Rojas. Sixth year player. Brown calls him the toughest player he's coached in his Division I career. That's saying a lot because Isaac Brown has been to a lot of spots throughout the years. Longtime assistant in Arkansas. Porter missing a step back three. Wichita State one for five from out there. Tigers have Jonathan Lawson, Demarie Franklin in the game. Four reserves. Along with Williams. Good wraparound feed by Franklin. Dandridge hits Williams. And Williams hits a three. Well, that's terrific offense and great awareness by Memphis and the ability to drive to the rim, feel the help, and then know that your player is going to drift to the corner for the open three after the help dives into the middle of the lane. Porter splits the defense and gets the left handed roll. Five points for Craig Porter Jr. Lawson. Grabbed by Dandridge, spins his way to Franklin. Memphis three for three from three to start the game, five for 11 for the field, as Lomax rattles it in. Alex Lomax scoreless in 29 minutes in his return to the lineup Sunday, hits his first shot. Well, he's so important for Memphis, just gives him a good on-ball defender, such a veteran presence out there on the floor. Really won't look for a shot unless he's wide open. Quarter three. He's an up and close for Wichita State. Now one for six from deep. Well, Alex Lomax, Lomax is, will run the team. He comes in. He can play multiple spots out there on the floor. Defend multiple spots. And that time, Wichita State, again, kind of over-helping. Everybody's digging into the paint. And Memphis is well-schooled at feeling the help and then pitching it back out to the three-point line for an open shot. There's nine games, Lomax, after... Suffering a groin injury against UCF January 11th. One of the nation's leaders in steals. 2.7 per game at the time of his injury was fourth. Lawson loses it. Take away for Wichita State's Rojas. Porter bumps. That ball rejected violently by Keo Akabundu Ahiogu just into the game. And Franklin follows him with a three. Well, Porter lost control of the ball on that dribble drive in transition and never really recovered. And then Memphis turning opportunity into threes upon threes. Rojas with a three for Wichita State. Both these teams kind of feel that March is looming because they came here ready to play tonight. Both teams clicking on the offensive end. Rojas three for three. An early seven points. Now in the face of Williams, two six-year players. Williams with a cut and KO. Isaiah Porbear Chandler defending him. 
Stripped by Porter. Last touch by Akabundu Ehiogu. And Memphis turns it over for the third time. Uh, too much dribbling on that possession by Memphis. The big's got to be aware that Memphis is doing a good job of digging in on the post. And if you put your head down and take that extra dribble, dribble away from the basket, they will attack you and trap. Three turnovers for Memphis, which has assisted all seven of its baskets. Wichita State has assisted three of seven. Only one turnover for the shots. Rojas into traffic. Fights his way through it. And Rojas... Let me just ask North Carolina, but if we really want to talk Turkey, I think Memphis is pretty safe, particularly if they can grab this road win tonight, uh, even though it's not a vintage opponent this year in Wichita State. Tim will tell you, road, road wins are gold, especially late in the year. I think two and two down the stretch of the regular season is enough to pretty much assure Memphis a spot. Now, if they want to avoid something like the last four in, then, you know, let's try to beat Houston or win an up game in the AAC tournament just to be safe. Joe, quickly on Memphis, uh, they won at Vanderbilt the first game of the year, November 7th. They beat Texas A&M December 17th. Those wins look a lot better now. How much does it matter when you were playing a team versus how they look at the end of the year in the committee big picture? The committee would tell you that all games are created equal. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think how you're playing later matters. I think most coaches try to point toward playing better at the end of the year, but we don't have a vote. The committee does. So those wins are going to stand very well for Memphis, particularly A&M, one of the hottest teams in the country. So, Joe, we've all seen Houston all season long. We know they're for real. We know they really don't have any weaknesses and would not be surprised if they did not leave their bedrooms in Houston and were in mm -hmm. the Final Four. But how surprised were you at the reveal earlier in the week that they ended up number two? Pleasantly surprised. And I'll tell you why, Tim. You know, there's so much emphasis now on, you know, quad one wins and, 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 and the big time wins in, in the power conferences. And obviously, if you're not in one of those anointed leagues, you have fewer opportunities. That's just the way it is. But Houston is, is something that requires a little bit of nuance, I think, just like Gonzaga over the years in evaluating the Bulldogs. I was happy for Houston, I think, reading between the lines, if not for the head-to-head -head loss to Alabama, they would have been number one overall because they're pretty much number one in all of the major metrics at this point. Joe Lenardi, uh, always a pleasure to have you with us, and uh, thanks for skipping away from the Jersey Shore for a bit to spend some time with us. You bet. Joy Brackets in the Bracket Bunker back in Bristol. So Memphis went a couple of games down the stretch. You said you'd feel good. This would be a low quad two win for them. They are a slight favorite today against the Wichita State team playing well, and they just had a miss from Jonathan Lawson. Couple more turnovers during that stretch. Now five for Memphis in the game. Good take by Jaquan Walton for his second bucket. Uh, Jaquan Walton, he gets ahead of Steve going to the rim. You are going to step out of the way because he's going to elevate over the top. Just a terrific finish in traffic. Six in a row for the Shockers. Wichita State showing some zone. Little 2-3, maybe in a 3-2 matchup. Trying to slow Memphis down just a touch, which is really hard to do. And Williams muscles inside to score. Five points and four assists early for DeAndre Williams. Good recognition by Memphis is to take their time and attack that middle of the zone, get into the paint. Close speed for Poto against a great shot blocker, KO. Shockers have Gus Okafor in the game for the first time. He did not play the last four. Porter stepping in off the glass. No, Williams with a rebound. Davis back on the floor for Memphis. Mismatch with Okafor. Leans in, couldn't get the bounce. And Okafor with a strong board. Be careful here, Gus Okafor. Finally got rid of it with Davis hounding. He was looming, but good job by Wichita State on that last drive by Davis. They gave two help. They gave help, but cut off his passing angles at the rim. He had to pitch up a force. Kind of contested runner. 
Porter inside, squeezing his way through. What a finish by Craig Porter Jr. Well, that's where Craig Porter has to be effective tonight for Wichita State. Drive it first, then look for the three. Franklin a missed three, and Porter has it. He can drive it. He can pass it. Pierre with space. And an offensive rebound for Okafor. He will take it in. And Williams called for the push. Well, Mario Franklin left the basketball, and Utah State has just been playing at an up-tempo rate. And this is what Isaac Brown talked about, just... Don't settle for threes. Try to attack with space, and the threes will come after you attack. Rush Okafor hits the first. This weekend, it's another massive college basketball Saturday. North Carolina still quad one winless, but hanging right near the bubble cut line. They'll host Virginia with a big chance to get one, followed by Virginia Tech Duke. And then Saturday primetime, St. Mary's and Gonzaga for the West Coast Conference regular season title 10 Eastern night Central the game day crew will be there as the Zags try to get a little revenge Gales winning at home a couple of weeks ago well good job by North Carolina last night they were looked dead in the water at halftime 21 points in the first half against North Carolina and found a way to get that road win which was beyond important a road win in South Bend is not what it used to be, but a road loss in South Bend would have been disastrous. Hardaway's missed three, grabbed by the walk-on Flanagan. Flanagan. Taylor Lawson got a piece of that one from behind. Well, that's just a force by Flanagan. It's going to turn into an opportunity for Memphis. And then Williams turns it over. His first, Memphis is six. A good job by Wichita State on the retreat. Making sure they found Williams and gave a little support down in the box. Shockers two for 11 from three. Now two for 12. Pierre missed it. Lomax around Flanagan. An easy score in transition for Alex Lomax. And a timeout. I, us here in Iowa, we've got Michigan State, Iowa, noon Eastern on ESPN Saturday in the men's game. Two Big Ten teams trying to improve their tournament seed and then. Big one between Indiana and Iowa women's on Sunday afternoon. Penny Hardaway mixing it up a little bit, trying to slow Wichita State down out of the timeout. Little 1 2 2 back to a 2 3 zone. An open three. Pierre not close. Saved by Walton right to Davis. Shockers just cannot get going from three. And Davis gets going in transition, his second man. Well, Penny Hardaway calls it playing to your weakness, and that's what really Wichita State is doing right now. They're, they're shooting too many quick threes instead of going inside first and then looking for the three or getting a ball reversal, moving the ball, and then finding the open man. 7 of 12 from 2 to 2 of 13 from 3. Here's a 2. That works with Pono. Go inside first. Put the pressure on the interior of Memphis's defense. DeAndre Williams, get him in foul trouble if you can. He's fouled out of seven games this year, but there's no way he's going to get in foul trouble when you're shooting a lot of threes. Here's Williams. Good drop off for Lawson. Pivoting. Lomax faking. Stepping back on Flanagan and Lomax. Is three for three after an 0 for 7 Sunday at Houston. Now found the open look after, in fact, the ball went inside. And Lawson kicked Flanagan in the face. Well, when you play against the zone or man, this time it was against the 2 3, you've got to put pressure on the inside first and see if the defense collapses. Then the threes will open, but the ball has to go inside the three-point line that time. Wichita State, good job attacking into the paint. We asked Isaac Brown, what are you doing better of late? He said we're playing inside out and not outside out like we were early in the season. Really feels like they've run the offense well through Rojas and Potom in the game together right now. Porter. Now the cutting Walton catches and finishes. Now Porter so good at attacking with his head up and he has one thing in mind. You must move when he gets into the paint because he will find you cutting to the rim on the backside. Three assists, seven points, four rebounds, three steals for Porter. And now flat again. Lomax dribbled it off his shoe. Walton's on the floor. Got rid of it to Flanagan. And Rojas takes it in with a foul.
Kendrick Davis, unlike Kendrick Davis, lost possession of the ball. And then it was a free-for-all. This is like a fumble in the Super Bowl. Let's go get it. First to the floor wins. And that that's what happened as Jaquan Walton was the first to put his nose on it and Rojas took advantage. And they no longer have a football team here at Wichita State. We would not have known from that sequence. Rojas, last 11 games, has been one of Wichita State's primary scorers and rebounders. Well, if they did have a team, he'd be starting tight end, I think. <laughs> he is perfectly built for a football for a football tight end, but he is a great, really aggressive, sound basketball player as well. I mean, he's 6'6", 223 out of Western New York. That screams tight end they, right there. They're growing big up in Jamestown. Uh -huh. Him and Gronk. A steal for Porter, his fourth of the game. Porter still with it. And he'll get it back from Flanagan. And good job by Flanagan not forcing the issue, taking their time, continuing to try to attack the paint off the bounce. Porter in the switch with Lawson. Well short from three. Rebound Rojas. Porter cuts and couldn't squeeze it home. Kept alive to Davis. Davis. Lomax. Uh, Davis clearing out on Porter and burying the two. And he's just so hard to defend because he just creates that space with the change of direction, kind of an off-balance dribble, a little crossover, then the step back. Seven points for Kendrick Davis, 20 in the first meeting between these teams. 21.3 per game score on the year. Working through Poto again. Double team comes and Poto tied up. Possession arrow stays with Wichita State. They'll have 40 million though. We got, we got shocker blackout babies here. I mean, we, who knows what Sean Farnham is trying to throw our way, Tim? Talk about the Bruins and not to talk about there, that's for sure. What, Boston, Boston, Boston Bruins? <laughs> they, made, they made a big trade today, but it wasn't. It's about Nick Cronin and what he's got going on out there. They are real good. Walton two of the paint. Meanwhile, Jordan mentioned Wichita State played brilliantly inside. 22 of their 32 points in the paint at the moment. Both teams doing a nice job changing defenses, not letting the offenses get into a, a real rhythm. But Memphis doing a nice job of organizing against the zone. Davis with seven. They get nine. Just before the expiration of the shot clock for Kendrick Davis. I mean, that was good, real good defense that time by Craig Porter, but he just went for the ball fake, and that's why Davis is so special. He can beat you in a lot of different ways. Back-to-back -back jumpers for Davis. He and Lomax have the last 10 for Memphis. And the Rojas, who is 5 for 5 in the game, draws another foul, works his way right back to the line. Uh, there's no secret why Wichita State has been playing better as of late, and this is one of the reasons why James Rojas does a real good job of coming from the weak side, just flashing, not standing, not ball watching, cutting in front of his defender, face cutting, and then being physical with his footwork. He was originally committed to Buffalo after some time at Hutchinson Community College. Nate Oates took the Alabama job, went there. Kind of bulked up, moved from a wing to a big, and his three years at Batman will end his college career here in Wichita. Five for five for the field, three free throws and a three, 14 points. And Lawson draws a foul. Tomorrow, NBA Friday doubleheader as we come off the All Star break. Starts with the Bucks in the Heat at 7 30 Eastern, 6 30 Central. And then Kevin Durant, the Suns jersey, which is going to take some time to get used to against Shea Gilgis Alexander, the Thunder, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. NBA countdown starts it all off at 7 Eastern. Well, Ken Phoenix rebound. I'm not sure they're going to have the defensive mindset to do the damage out west. It looks like Denver is. If Denver, Denver stays whole, they look like the favorite to me out west. So. Thank God we're getting back to real basketball after watching the little All Star game tonight. <laughs> You weren't a fan of that high-tempo defense style? 
out of bounds. It'll stay with Mitchell. Well, I do, I do have three young children that I'm trying to teach the basics of basketball, and one of the basics is to play, get into a stance once in a while defensively, but that's okay. It was a fun night. Yeah, some people have parental controls for, like, Game of Thrones. Your TV's parental controls are for the NBA All-Star game. Uh, stand still while someone runs by you and dunks. But that's okay. It was fun. It was a fun it's night. all for good fun. Exactly. Lawson went one for two. James Rojas picked up his second foul there, by the way. He stays in the game for Wichita State. A wild pass there, and it's going to be another turnover. Good find by Porter, and an easy finish for Rojas. He's got 16 and a half. Uh, Rojas took a long nap this afternoon because he is playing at 100 miles an hour on defense in full court transition and in the half court offensively. His season high, 19 against Memphis. He is already three points away from it. And when you watch James Rojas, when he sees the loose ball come about, here he goes. He knows he's going to get the get the ball in transition and he'll do a good job of not fouling at the rip. Now six for six from the field. A little zone look from Wichita State. Franklin, a deep one. Not a good three-point shooter, but Williams grabs his miss. Finds Davis with space. Davis delivers another three. He's got a dozen, and then it's Rojas down the floor again. And Rojas does it again. Memphis has completely fallen into a transition slumber. Well, that guy, I don't know how you catch him because he is, a, he is running at one level, and it's hard to do against a good team. And Memphis is a good team, and this is after a score that he's beating the defense down the floor. Dandridge spins home a two. It's starting to look a little bit like the NBA All-Star game, Tim. Well, the effort is there, but the offense has been excellent. It really has spacing, change the side of the floor, and Rose Rojas attacking. Right into the body of Lawson to draw his second foul. Rojas can set a new season high at the line before the end of the first half. Couple of 19-point games, season and career highs. The last one was against Memphis on January the 19th of the first of those two 19-point games. Seven for seven from the field tonight. And he is yet to tie the season high. Three for five now at the line. Well, he, he knows where his bread is buttered now. I mean, early in the season, maybe he's forcing some threes and... Look at Poto, three for 25 on the season from the three. You know, go inside, man. Go inside and try to do your work in the paint. Put the pressure on the defense. That's what Isaac Brown said has been the biggest difference in the last few weeks with his team there. The physical big men are playing like big men. Rojas ties his career high before the team's head to the locker room and gets a huge ovation on his way to the bench. Three-quarter court, soft pressure, just takes some time off the clock, falling back into the zone. Franklin. Franklin. Got the bounce. Good job by Mario Franklin, just taking his time. Reverse the ball. Wichita State never got set with their half-court defense. Five points for Franklin off the bench. Final minute. What's been an entertaining first half from the jump. Shockers have hit their last four. Tigers have hit their last three. Here's Pierre. And the switch with Dandridge. Oka for a three. Well short. Feels like every time Wichita State takes a three, it's a win for Memphis. And the Tigers will use the timeout. Mine last night after that loss at BC. Virginia. A half game behind Miami for first in the ACC, and Pitt tied with Virginia, a half game behind the Hurricanes. And ACC still very much up for grabs. Final possession of the half, potential. For the high middle ball screen, you see Davis can get into the paint, and he'll help, he'll drive and kick. Here's McCadden, a quiet first half, and he draws a foul. Isaac McCadden. Scored 20 points on Sunday. They all came in the second half. He does not have a shot attempt in this game. And we'll go to the line for two. 
Elijah McCadden really there was nowhere to go, but had good clock awareness trying to make something happen at the rim. Memphis is leading scorer the last two games, McCadden. Franklin and Lawson will check in. I thought that was pretty good defense by Wichita State. McCadden seemed to be spinning out of control, but Wichita State got into his body at the rim. Graduate transfer from Georgia Southern after a line change in terms of free throw lane positioning. And McCadden one for two. Pierre will inbound. Finds Okafor. Lost control of it. Porter's got it. That shot is late. First half for a play tonight. He's tied a career high with 19. That career high, by the way. The first set against Memphis in the first game this year. Craig Porter Jr. has done everything. Look at that stat shuffing, uh, stat stuffing line. 7, 4, 5, and 4. Shockers have been great in the paint. Memphis starts the second half with Demarie Franklin in for Jaden Hardaway. And they start with a DeAndre Williams miss. Rojas clears the rebound. Wichita State 14 of 20 on two-point shots. Two of 15 threes and a turnover. Taken by Williams. Feeds Davis. Left it short. Now the Shockers can run with Porter. Rojas. Inside to Poto. Wraps around to give Wichita State the first second half lead. Well, when Wichita State wasn't jacking up contested threes in the first half, they were doing that. They were doing a nice job of passing the ball. Ten assists, two turnovers in the first half. Meanwhile, Memphis turned it over way too much in the first half. And they've got to focus on running their half-court offense, not taking quick shots. Nine turnovers in that first half. 18 on Sunday in their last game against Houston. Williams deep into the shot clock. Lawson, Franklin, no from three. And McCadden had the rebound knocked away, then scooped it out to Davis. Franklin just one for four from three. Seven for 32 on the season. Williams singling out with Rojas. Floats it. In and out, back in. Well, good job by DeAndre Williams. And you can't overhelp on him in the paint because he dribbles in with his head up and he is such a good passer. If you help too much, he'll find an open three point shooter. That time was one on one coverage. Five assists to go with those seven points. Here's Walton, eight in the first half. Inside Poto. Triple team came. Knocked out to Davis. Memphis has numbers. There goes Davis. Head full of steam and he cannot finish. But he does draw the foul. He's a little frustrated right now. Right? His timing's probably just a little bit off. He's jet quick, we know, but he missed the previous layup. And even though he got fouled on this one, he usually puts this one home. And DeAndre Williams, we talked about it earlier. He's with his head up, the one-on-one -on -one coverage is dangerous to help on him. So they didn't, but they didn't elevate and contest in the lane, and he jumped right over the top. First free throw attempts at a game for Davis. Gets there nearly eight times per game and is fourth in the country in total free throws made. Here are the big numbers on Kendrick Davis, who was the American Conference Player of the Year a season ago. Certainly a strong contender to win it again this year. I think the only reason you wouldn't vote for him is if you want to vote for somebody on the best team, that's Houston. But individually, his numbers are as strong as anyone's. Well, Houston, certainly Marcus Sasser is going to be right there with him, and rightfully so. But he's really connected perfectly with Kenny, Penny Hardaway in season one. A real bond, those two. Flanagan rattles in a three. Well, that time they found the open three after they went inside, and that's how Wichita State has to operate in the half court if they're going to take threes. First basket for Flanagan, the walk-on from junior college. McCadden in the Rojas, that is an offensive foul. Rojas was lying in wait. 
Well, what hasn't James Rojas done tonight? And I think just the way he's played this game has had an effect on his teammates. Just playing physical defense, getting up on the backboard, sharing the ball, and giving up your body. He's doing that with two fouls, too. Cadden picks up his first. Well, I'm not sure if that wasn't a flop, but he certainly sold it. That, and that's the key. What's the last flop you saw called? No, oh, the, the flops are gone. <laughs> I don't like to call. I don't like to call anyway, and I don't think the officials like it. You know, that's good purpose behind it, but. I think the officials are all good enough to either call the blocker charge or let him play out. Well, I've seen a lot of flops, right. but I haven't seen many called maybe since January. That was on Franklin there, his first. Porter spinning on Lawson. Well, this is a foul against Memphis. Franklin, in disbelief, has picked up a quick two. Memphis has picked up a quick three as a team. And Alex Lomax will get him. Another aspect of the game tonight, Wichita State's done a good, pretty good job of containing Memphis off the offensive glass. Another foul. Lawson wrestling with Poto. Three on Chandler Lawson. Now only four offensive rebounds, three points in for Memphis, which is typically a statistic of strength for them. Dandridge will replace Lawson. Wichita State's trying to go into Poto and roll box. I mean, he's doing a pretty good job of carving out space, but Dandridge will present some other problems. Porter knocked away. Dandridge got a piece of it. Flanagan, the loose change. Now it's Porter with a switch on Dandridge. Didn't want the screen from Rojas. And he missed a step back three. A cat. Only one first half point. Williams. Good patience for Williams to score. Patience, footwork, the ability to turn in the lane and just find that little angle at the rim to finish. Oldest player in Division I men's basketball at 26. Long and winding journey to get here. Playing at a first team all conference level. Poto against McCatton. Size advantage, Shockers. Poto taken away by Dandridge, and Davis saves it. Poto a little bit slow to react here. Tigers can push it. And then Davis turned it over into the arms of Flanagan. Dandridge is down behind the play and slow to get up. Numbers for the Shockers. Flanagan missed it. Nobody boxed out Poto. Now Melvin Dandridge was slow on the retreat. Either got tied up on the rebound or just didn't have the energy to get back. And Poto took advantage. Nobody near him at the rim. Penny Hardaway told us Dandridge was only at about 60% on Sunday in his return back. A.B. Burdett asked him a few moments ago if he was okay. He stays in the game, but looks totally gassed. Four to shoot for Williams. He doesn't know it. One to shoot for Williams. And he got it in just in time. But K.B. Burdett wants a shot clock review. See if this basket will count or not. It takes us to the under 16. 23rd here at Wichita State. Fifth year, the school in which he played. More Black History stream, the Black History Always collection on ESPN+. Plus. Frank Cape, new lead assistant, longtime head coach at Tulsa, part of the staff. The Memphis team that right now is the sixth to last team in the field, according to Joe Lenardi. And Joe says they go two and two down the stretch. They should be fine for a second straight tournament bid. You know, the eye, eye test certainly tells you they're a good basketball team, but that doesn't mean a lot. And, you know, how they overcome the loss of Keontae Kennedy is also an issue for Memphis just to see who's going to step into his role at 10 points a game. And out for the rest of the regular season. Broken right hand after punching a wall out of frustration after the Tigers lost to Houston Sunday. 
They played well in that game. They didn't lead, but without Kendrick Davis, they lost by eight. Williams charges into Rojas. That'll be the third foul against James Rojas. You can't believe it. Sunday afternoon, great women's basketball doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. Starting with 10th ranked Notre Dame against Louisville, and then the big game we mentioned, Indiana, Iowa. Game day will be there at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Bell Duncan and the crew at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central. ESPN and streaming on the ESPN app. Off the missed three by loss and a one point Memphis lead. Tigers looking for their sixth straight win against Wichita State. The last five have come by an average of 16 points per game. Rojas tripped and fouled by Jonathan Lawson. One time Wichita, excuse me, Memphis set the trap down to Rojas. Down that short baseline with his back to the basket. But if they're going to trap down there, they've got to close it out a lot tighter and not give him the baseline. Rojas yet to shoot it in the second half. There's a travel against poor Bear Champ. Well, Isaac Brown saying, why are you passing the ball to Corbett Chandler? Corbett Chandler out on the perimeter, and Corbett Chandler not used to really handling the ball out there. And the Memphis pressure got to him. Just the fifth turnover committed by Wichita State. Kabundo Ahiogu into Poor Bear Chandler. And Poor Bear Chandler blocks the shot. And what do we have at the end of this year? Rojas slapped for the ball, and the foul's going to go against Poor Bear Chandler, his first. I thought Poor Bear Chandler did a good job. You see the forearm in the back. That's a good call. Did a really good job moving his feet and building a wall down there, but the extracurricular, the extended forearm, got him. Luckily, it was not called on the late swipe by Rojas, who's playing with three fouls. Poor Bear Chandler just his first. Into Williams, into Poor Bear Chandler, who held up brilliantly again. Well, good job building the wall, Isaiah. Poor Bear Chandler. Physical. Porter's pass from nearly picked. Leaves Wichita State with an advantage. Rojas against Davis. And an offensive foul is called on James Rojas. And that is number four. Now well, that's devastating right there. And he's got to understand, too, that, you know, obviously you don't want to take away the energy, the toughness, the playing hard, but you have to know where you are on the floor, where you are in the basketball game, and he's got to feel the pressure there. He tries to turn and Kendrick Davis he didn't he should, instead of going through him he should have just went up over the top you think that, easy jump hook you like that call it's a good call he took it he took it in the chest so 13 33 mark Rojas career high tying 19 is out of the game and then Davis threw it away last touched apparently by poor Bear Chandler and there might be a revolt from the Wichita State student section soon Gus Okafor has replaced Poor Bear Chandler. Dandridge back in the game for Akabundo Ehiogu. Olmax. Dandridge with space and muscles at home with a foul. Well, Wichita State needs to be able to regroup. Some of the calls are, are going against them. Obviously, Rojas now is on the bench for a long time, but this is just way too easy. A simple screen to screener, and Wichita State is not wasn't prepared. They weren't in the stance. They weren't ready to defend before the official handed the ball to the inbound. Much improved foul shooter Dandridge. 21 for 27 on the season of the three-point play. Good baseline out of bounds play. Just a simple screen and roll back to the basketball. Old school. Let's see if Wichita State can rein the emotions of the game back in here. 
In the past, when they've had these moments, they've really gone to the three. They need to keep attacking. Walton a three. No, he slipped it into poor Barry Chandler. And that was a good late decision. Yeah, that was. It looked like maybe Walton was going to force the issue, but he had his head up and poor Barry Chandler. Nice job with the screen and nice feet, hands, and the ability just to finish at the rim. Transferred back in after a year at Omaha. Poor Barry Chandler, his second Wichita State stint. Williams off to McCann. And another rejection. Poor Bear Chandler with a stop. Isaiah Poor Bear Chandler coming in off the bench. He plays about nine minutes a game, but giving Wichita State some excellent minutes, especially defensively with the size and the resistance. And then Wichita State falls completely asleep on the inbound again. That's twice in a row, Tim. How do they fall asleep on back-to-back -back under the basket inbound? Well, that, that happened so quickly. I'm not even sure they were in man or zone. In the previous possession, they were in zone. But here, you know, the thing that you must teach your team is that you have to defend the paint first and then move out. Inside, out defensively, but also don't get caught ball watching. There's five defenders on the floor and only four offensive players because the guy taking the ball out of bounds he can't score so you don't need, don't focus in on him focus in on what's going on on the court two fouls on poor bear chandler he'll take a seat for poto lomax and dandridge check out for memphis it's a good way to sell it to your team excuse me how are they scoring five against four it's on one pass and a layup i mean that's just not being ready to defend early enough I was told there would be no map play. That one I think we could figure out. Williams up to 13. I make it, yeah, 13 for Williams, beg your pardon. Two for two at the line. He and Davis have combined for 27. Rest of the Tigers, 26, which is the way it typically goes for Memphis. Porter, great dribbling display. Shockers could have something on here, but a low pass had to be recalibrated by Walton. Poto gets to the right hand, missed it. Good move, couldn't finish. That was a good move, but Dandridge did a good job of sliding his feet and contesting at the rim. Williams finds an open Lawson. And Lawson is a little cavalier with the ball. Memphis is watching him develop since his freshman year at TCU, where he didn't really have a great offensive game. He was more of a defender on ball, but his improved year after year and last year we saw it in this league at SMU and now we're really seeing it at Memphis. Here, his first basket of the game after an 0 for 4 start from 3. Well, he took his time. It was within the context of the offense. He was open, got his feet set, and that might be enough to lift Wichita State back to the level of play we saw in the first half. Back in the 2-3 zone, trying to slow down Wichita State. It's Memphis, but Memphis has done a good job attacking. They're very patient. They're trying to go right into the middle. Four to shoot for Lawson. Outlet Davis. In and out. Lawson tips it to Poto. Between Poto and Forbear Four Bear Chandler, Wichita State's bigs have done a good job in the paint on both ends, especially on the backboards. Okafor. Little use player and a miss three and a loose ball is going to be out of bounds off of Davis. Kendrick Davis was right there to retrieve the loose ball. Looked like he got shoved out of bounds down on the baseline. And one thing we have seen tonight when that ball goes on the deck, there's a lot of people trying to secure it. And Watch Davis, he goes to pick it up here and he gets shoved or fouled. And Pierre made a lot of contact. Again, Wichita State at times, they make one three and then they kind of get happy and think that we can make three or four in a row instead of getting back to the game plan like that. Porter spins it home. 13th lead change of the game. And this one to the Shockers' favor. Franklin's pass knocked away by Pierre. It's almost all over it with Davis. Davis finds an open Franklin. 
And Memphis takes the lead right back. Good job by Memphis. Staying organized, and then they had to reorganize again at the end of the clock against the zone, but they stayed with the play. Seven for Franklin. Maybe his two best games in conference play have come this week. Porter, space. Well, short. His shot has not been there tonight. Four for 15. Here's McCadden hard, charging and a foul. That's what happens sometimes when your point guard dribble drives into the lane. You must have backside rotation. Porter drove into the lane. There was really nowhere to go, but no one rotated back for defensive help in transition. Puts Memphis in the bonus for the rest of the half as well. The two-shot foul. Pierre picks up his second. 63% free throw shooting to Cap. That's the first. The American Conference is on ESPN Plus. Featured upcoming matchups for the Shockers and Tigers women's basketball teams, which it's on State Temple Saturday, too late Memphis. Wednesday, and every game up until the championship of the American Women's Basketball Tournament on ESPN Plus beginning March 6th. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash AAC. Both teams doing a nice job of changing defenses almost on every other possession. This time Memphis in the 1-2-2. Two, two. Back to the man-to-man. -man. Some very good defensive teams. Higher scoring than their opponents usually see tonight. Well, now they're back into a zone. It's, they kind of showed a soft man, but it was really a zone. Pierre hoists a three and makes it. Well, Memphis has to be more aware of Pierre. If they're going to play zone, they have to know where he is because he's starting to show that he's getting confident from outside. This four straight, he's hit the last two. Davis missed it. Lawson there, and Lawson sticks it back. His first basket and another lead change. Pierre again. Couldn't make it three in a row. That was a pretty good look. Even though it was quick, he's made two in a row, and he was open. Poked away from Davis. Walton saves it to Porter. All alone to tie the game. Whatever your position is here with us, on-site producer. And in those pictures as well, thanks to our great server, Misha. Look, it's not an ESPN broadcast in Wichita. We don't talk about the Dugod Diner. Shout out to the Mark Adams booth here in Wichita. There's McCann into the teeth of the defense, his first field goal. Memphis takes the lead back. 14 lead changes, 12 times in a game before that basket. And it's up for grabs down the street. Well, Isaac Brown knows his team a lot better than I do, but... I really question that timeout. You know, he had the momentum going, the building's on fire, they score, and then he pops a timeout. And allowed Memphis to get going, but maybe he does know his team better than me. He is a three beats two. Gerard Pierre, 27% three point shooter, had been six for his last 36 before hitting three out of four. Trusty, again back in the zone. Memphis has been taking a lot of time against this zone. Running the shot clock down. Franklin. Lost into the corner. Got it for three. Well, the drive in drift. It's successful even against the zone. It's basic basketball. Drive the baseline. Drop your wing down to the opposite corner where there's no help. First three point of the half for Memphis. Here, the transfer from Southern Miss. Deep one. Not close. And it will be Memphis ball at the under eight. Ball eyes. Right now they're a 10 seed. Any grip is a little tenuous this time of year when you know in a couple of weeks there will be some teams that will quote unquote steal some bids. Conference tournaments. Tigers look like an NCAA tournament team. This would be a nice addition to the resume. The Cannon. Off the face of Pierre into the hands of Okafor. Good defense by Poto on the inside because Williams was bound and determined to get to the rim but just lost control of the ball in the lane. 14th Memphis turnover. Porter has done everything tonight. With a mismatch with Williams, which means Poto has a mismatch with Franklin. Porter again, Davis on him. Into Poto. 
Williams doubles. Poto steps through and throws it off the window. Now they just forced the issue with Poto inside because he's he's receiving the double. They need to go inside then reverse the floor. Franklin set up by Davis after an overplay by Pierre. Which does they never got their defense set, and Memphis is very well schooled. They run to both corners, and if you drive into the gap and turn your head inward, they will go outside. Franklin has tied a season high with 10, his second straight game with 10. Playing big minutes for the injured Keontae Kennedy. Shockers are stagnant. They're going to bring Rojas back at the next whistle. Williams blocked the shot. Shot clock hasn't reset. Now Franklin with a takeaway. Three on two. Williams inside. Muscling his way to the basket. And count the basket. A long continuation provided as DeAndre Williams give Memphis the largest lead for either team tonight. Well, here comes Memphis off to the races. They don't run to the rim. They run to the corners. And then a little step through. Excellent physicality, toughness, and footwork. And the ability to use both hands at the rim by DeAndre Williams. It's an 8-0 run for the Tigers, who hit their last five shots. James Rojas out of the game with four fouls at the 13-33 mark. Memphis led by one at that point. And they've extended the lead to seven with Rojas on the bench. Now, Wichita State thought that foul was on the floor, and I do agree, but it was before Williams got into a shot motion and give him credit though. He stayed with the play and made it look like it was a good long continuation Can't complete it And again the largest lead of the night for either team with under six to go Rojas yet to score in the second half after 19 in the first Porter Pierre, another three, his fourth of the half, though, will be reviewed, and KB Burdett has originally called it a two, it appears, that will be looked at shortly, great find Davis, better block Pierre, Tick it off the hand of Williams, well, Pierre, they, Memphis better stay tight to him, and don't help him, because he is feeling it, he can shoot it from anywhere on the court tonight, Here's Pierre again. Big second half. Creates space. Rebound to Chandler Lawson. That's the thing, though. Good defense that time on Pierre on the perimeter. They he tried to create a little space off the bounce, but they stuck with him on the perimeter. Davis. Another block by Port Bear Chandler. That's his fourth. Transition opportunity and a late whistle. Lawson. Get the foul against Rojas. That's six on Memphis. Well, again, James Rojas comes back in the game, immediately does what? Runs the floor, looking for the rim run. They tried to kind of squeeze it in out of nothing, out of nowhere, but he just put his big body in there to secure it and get fouled. Rojas got his third and fourth fouls in the second half and has not attempted a shot. After his best half of basketball in his six years of college, maybe. And here, Rojas draws a foul against Lawson, who thought he went straight up. Memphis thought he went straight up. The officials disagreed, and Rojas gets two. Well, Lawson looks like he had good legal guarding position, though. He, he backpedals, and that is not a foul. Rojas created the contact. When the offensive player creates the contact against a legal defender, it's not a foul on the defender. That's a bad luck for Memphis because it's also a loss of fourth. Rojas not shot it well at the line. Four for seven despite his great night in the field. Saturday triple header, six Eastern. It's number six Virginia and a North Carolina team desperate to get a quad one win. They're 0 and 9 in quadrant one games. Virginia Tech, Duke, and St. Mary's Gonzaga follow that all on ESPN, all on the ESPN app. With selection Sunday a couple of weeks away. 0 for 2 for Rojas, who is an 80% free throw shooter. Sometimes you. 
When a player has four, goes back in the game, he plays for a few possessions, he forgets that he has four, he's got to still understand he needs to stay on the floor to the end for Wichita State. Who's this foul going to be on? Rojas reached in. Walton had the initial contact, but it's on Walton. His second foul. And a one-on-one -on -one coming up for Memphis. fouls in the first half of this game well interesting though Kevin since Isaac Brown called that timeout when they had the momentum and tied the game and the building was on fire it's been all Memphis was at the 847 mark when he did that you weren't sure why the ticket time out there, especially with the under eight coming soon. Well, when you have Rojas with foul trouble, and maybe your backups are in the game, maybe they're gassed a little bit. You have to read your team, but I think the building was helping you with your exhaustion, maybe at that point, because they had absolute momentum. Austin one for two. Four minutes to play here in the roundhouse. Memphis looking for what would at the moment be a quad two win. Walton. And it's followed up by Walton. He's another guy that get, they can get going and look to on the baseline from the high post. They have kind of ignored him most of the night. He's got to do a better job of getting open, but Memphis has done a good defensive job on Walton. Fourth shocker in double figures. Franklin three. Rebound. Tipped by Williams to Davis. Finishes. Just before the onrushing poor bear Chandler could get there. Well, DeAndre Williams is one on one, smart plus on how to play the game, and then good job by Wichita answering on the other end. Pierre with 13 points, every one of them since the break. Davis finds Franklin. Well, that can happen when Kendrick Davis has the ball in his hands. You can get caught ball-watching, over-helping, and forget who you're guarding. That's what happened on that possession, and Franklin made a pay. New season high for Franklin. Porter answers. Well, tit for tat here down the stretch. And a lot of real good offensive execution right now both on both ends, and Kendrick Davis is trying to take over this game for Penny Hardaway. Still about to hit the under four. It has been flow and rhythm and continuous basketball here in Wichita for some time now. It's four out. They're going to use the high ball screen, let him do his work and make a decision, get to the rim, hit the roll man, or if they overhelp, drive and kick to a three-point shooter. Williams said it only timidly. Davis steps back, and Williams got a hand on it. Porter got both. Shockers on the run. Here's Walton. Off the shot fake. Missed it. Poor Bear Chandler battling hard, and Porter scoops it up. My goodness. Well, that was a fantastic open look by Wichita State, but they're showing some patience now and balance with their offense. Porter stripped and fouled. And he will shoot from falling into a net spot that would make it quad three. Points in the paint, dominated by the Shockers. Points off the bench, very impressive for Memphis. Tamari Franklin with 12 off the bench. And Craig Porter hits the front end of the one and one. Tim Welsh, you got four players in double figures for the Shockers, three for the Tigers. A lot of high-level offensive basketball. What makes a difference down the stretch? Well, balance, balance and, and don't settle. You know, that's the thing. Wichita State has not settled. They do a better job. Porter's done a better job of driving in, finding the open man. And defensively, they've done a good job on DeAndre Williams, but I have a feeling that Kendrick Davis is trying to take this game over, and that might be too much for Wichita State to overcome. Order two for two at the line. Under 90 seconds to play. Davis with 16. Guarded by Pierre. Steps inside. Finds Lawson. And a three for Jonathan Lawson. Now what a terrific play call by Penny Hardaway from the bench. That was a set play. Drive on the wing. See if you can draw a second, a third defender and look for the open man on the outside. Porter attacking. Feeds Pierre. That is a, a travel against Pierre and a turnover. 
Pierre looks a little together. They're playing a different way, harder defense, and you know, obviously tonight they've been toe-to-toe -to -toe with Memphis and looked a part of a good quality team, but this guy is just so good with the basketball. Down the stretch, Penny Hardaway is going to put it in his hands. Oh, he lost it for a moment there. Kendrick Davis wants a timeout. Timeout get Memphis. See, you look at a couple traps, but also understanding you do have the possession arrow, Kevin, so you can be very aggressive on the ball to try to get a tie-up. And to Williams, not fouling at the moment. See, I would have trapped him immediately in the corner and tried to get a tie-up. Davis dribbling through everybody in black and gold. He's certainly not the guy you want to foul, and then they do. I mean, that's about worst-case scenario. Burn 18 seconds, and then foul one of the best free-throw shooters in the country. Well, Isaac Brown had the stop sign up on the bench, but his team obviously didn't see him. He did not want to foul with only 12 on the clock. And again, they had the opportunity. They, Memphis threw it right into the dead corner, and that's a great place to get a trap or try to get a tie up, even though DeAndre Williams is so good and, and he's so long and hard to trap over there, but they should have attempted to trap him right away. A rarity. We'll keep this a two possession game no matter what. Davis one for two. It's a six point game. So a two possession game if they are both threes. Memphis a little full court pressure, maybe soft, probably false pressure just to make Wichita State think about it. Take some time off the clock. Border lost it. And it was last touched by a Memphis player. No backcourt violation. Walton in the loss in. Got a two. It's still a two possession game, though. Yeah. Because Wichita State has done everything they could do to hang in this game and, and really defend one of the best guards in, the, in America. Loss in the inbound. Rojas is hot. On Memphis has one timeout left. They barely got it off to Franklin. Williams is fouled. Williams tried to get the quick two, even with a shot clock off while under the basket. And it's a foul committed by Poto. Oh, it was good offensive play by Memphis. They run the baseline, but they doubled up. They, Kendrick Davis has got to go off opposite the ball instead of starting on ball side there when he runs the baseline. But they found a way to get it in. And, you know, I like Williams taking it to the rim there. What are you going to do? You're going to dribble it out for a couple seconds to get fouled anyway. 74% foul shooter, and he missed, uh, makes the first. DeAndre Williams, 16 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 blocks, 1 steal, which is a very DeAndre Williams line. But Jonathan Lawson did a, real, did a real nice job throwing a pass up the sideline when it looked like nothing was there. They were trying to get the ball to Davis, but Wichita State did a good job of bottling him up, but they found their fourth option up the sideline. Six-point game. Can you afford to get another two here? No. You've got to go for three. You have to find a way. No, they do not. Pierre. So that means Wichita State without it. Wichita State's not going away. And again, they have the arrow. So look for the tie-up first, then the foul, if they can't get a quick trap. Lawson can run the baseline again. It gets Williams. And Porter fouls him. Third against Craig Porter Jr. So back to the line for DeAndre Williams. Well, you, you watch as many games as we do all season long, and you see a lot of teams at the end of games not have a set go-to play against pressure after a make. And that's not the case with Memphis. They have been exact with what they wanted to do and been perfect in executing against the pressure. That's a big miss. The thing I like with the quick three, I mean, you see a lot of games where guys force a three and then the game's over. But the other thing is, if your team's aware you're going to come down and run a set play to get a quick three, if you go to the offensive glass, that's when the defense is not set and you might be able to kick it back out on an offensive rebound and get the open three. One for two for Williams, five-point game. Rojas, the inbounder. Porter for Wichita State. Walton hoists it up, and Walton buries it. That's a two. That's a long two. No timeouts left for Wichita State. Still a three-point game 
and it's Davis. And that's going to be a foul against Porter. That's a basketball play. He had no move. He had no room to operate because, in fact, Porter was in his space. So one free throw would all but seal it. And there's the one free throw. 18 points for Kendrick Davis. Five rebounds, four assists for Kendrick Davis, who did not play Sunday. An ankle injury he suffered earlier in the season. Aggravated against UCF. Missed the Houston game. They competed well without him. They've got him back, and they've got a win, it appears, in their pocket. Off hold of the ball for a long time. Rojas puts up a three. It's short. It's over. It's a Memphis win on the road. Six straight wins for the Tigers over Wichita.